Hello, everybody. Peter Greenberg here. Happy February 17th, 2022. Time for our Facebook Live Global Travel Update. Coming to you from tonight in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. We were in Saudi Arabia last week. We ran around the country, ended up staying a little bit longer. So we're here with you tonight. I'm actually in about seven hours getting on a plane about four in the morning and uh, heading back to the United States. And uh, can't wait to do it. Of course, where I'm going is to be a lot colder than it is here in uh, in Saudi Arabia. If you got some questions, you know what to do. Put them on. Uh, our radio show, of course, coming to you on Saturday, as it always does, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. That's Ion Travel on CBS. If you can't find it, no problem. Go right to our website, petergreenberg.com. Log on to the radio icon and listen to it live streamed. Lots of stuff to talk about in the news this week. It never gets any easier. Uh, because stories are breaking all the time. You may remember last week I talked about Crystal Cruises and the demise of that cruise line. It's always a sad story to see that happen, especially when you consider how many people had paid money for cruises they're now never going to take or deposits that may not ever be returned to them. It's an issue of refunding again. We know what happened during the pandemic with so many travel providers who either could not or would not issue refunds there were some credit vouchers that basically were like really bad gift cards. Uh, some were extended, some were never used. It was a very bad situation. And Krista was one of those cruise lines. Well, now uh, they were undercapitalized as well and could not handle the, uh, the downturn in their parent company's finances, uh, which then became insolvent on the Hong Kong exchange. And then everything cascaded down from there. Last week, I talked about what your rights were if you if you deserved a refund, especially if you paid with a credit card, interesting mix here of what came out of that. Number one, I talked about the federal trade the federal trade law and the federal credit law, which gave you protection for anything that you bought for 120 days that you did not receive a good or service that you contracted for. This would certainly qualify, but so many people paid for uh, cruises way in advance of that, maybe six months. Uh, and uh, that's a problem. And uh, now there is an interesting situation here uh, that nobody's going to volunteer for you. My good friend Angelo and Poco, uh, who monitors these things, uh, gave me this information and it's verified. There's something called Regulation Z. And this applies to whether you're purchasing travel or a washing machine or a car. It doesn't matter if you're paying with a credit card. And here's how it works. We know the 120 day rule. And a lot of companies will tell you, oh, we're not giving you any money back because you, you're outside that window. But Regulation Z is not for those companies. Regulation Z is the credit card companies themselves that they subscribe to. And that's a 540-day rule. Now, that's a much bigger deal. And you may qualify for a refund or a credit on your credit account for that. But here's the rub there. How many people bought cruises back in 2019 that they never got a chance to take in 2020, and then it got extended and rebooked and extended and rebooked. They are outside the 540-day chargeback window, and they they truly become an uns unsecured creditor, and they're probably out of luck. It may be a tax deduction, which is about all you can do. I'm not an accountant. I don't play one on TV, but that seems to be your only options. However, if you're within that 540 days, Regulation Z is your new best friend. Get back in there. And go back to your credit card company and apply for that credit. Uh, you're entitled to it. All right. So that's what's going on with that. Uh, I'm coming to you, of course, as I said, from Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, a kingdom that was closed for over 79 years. The only travelers who came here were religious pilgrims. And that changed about two and a half years ago. And it changed suddenly. They threw open the doors. Visas became easy to get for just about anybody. You could apply for one online, boom, you got it. And uh, the country is wide open. Uh, what's wild is, as much as it's advanced in the last couple of years, it's still uh, a hidden gem. It's still undiscovered. It's still unexplored. It's still uh, uncharted. Uh, and in this week that we've been doing my, my television special for PBS called Hidden Saudi Arabia, and of course, our mantra for these shows is no gift shop, no tour buses, and no TripAdvisor logos. 
That certainly qualifies for Saudi Arabia, but the entire country, based on that definition, is a hidden gem. We were out in uh, Tobuk, uh, where we're on the Red Sea, with 90 undiscovered, undeveloped, untouched islands. Uh, we're in the, in the empty quarter, and they call the empty quarter that for a reason. Check it out. What an unbelievably vast expanse of what some might describe as nothingness. I describe it completely differently, and you'll see why. Uh, we were in Jeddah, and, and one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the Old City. Speaking of World Heritage Sites, we were in Alula. Check that out online. Unbelievable in the desert there. And of course, we had some surprises. We were in a forest. That's right. Saudi Arabia has a forest. I went hiking in a forest. Uh, so many things to talk about. That special will be on later this year. Uh, and of course, uh, there'll, be, there'll be snips of that uh, on our website, petergreenberg.com, as the year goes on. But that's what we were doing here, uh, and also our radio show as well. And then we're heading back to the States uh, very soon. Now, lots of other things to talk about. Uh, Alaska Airlines came back with an old idea that they made new again, a subscription-based flight plan. So for X number of dollars a month, you get to fly around the Pacific Northwest in California. And if you're a frequent flyer, it may make sense to get that flight pass. It reminds me, and when I say that they, they took something old and made it new, it reminds me of what happened back in the 1980s, early 80s. Remember Eastern Airlines? They came up with something called the Unlimited Flight Pass. What a great opportunity. For $999, you got unlimited, did you hear me? Unlimited coach tickets for 30 days in the United States and the Caribbean and Mexico. Well, that was the good news. I got one. I couldn't wait to get one of those passes and boy, did I use it. One small little hiccup. If you looked at the Eastern Airlines route system back in the 1980s, if you wanted to go from Los Angeles to San Francisco, you had to go via Atlanta. <laughs> You know what? I was looking at Atlanta a lot, but for $999, it was worth it. And if you plan the flights correctly, you didn't have to stay at a hotel, right? You took the red eyes. So for people on a budget who needed to do stuff, and you know, this is sort of right before the mileage program, but can you imagine what would have happened if that qualified for mileage? Anyway, good luck for the Alaska Airlines program. We'll have more news on that next week to see if it really does make economic sense to do one of those passes in 2022. Speaking about economic sense, we're talking about airfares coming into uh, March, April, and May. Uh, the bad news is on average, airfares are going up about 7% every 10 days. We talked about that last week, that's compounded. So if you don't plan in advance, you're gonna pay more. However, I did some fair comparisons. You know what the airfare is right now from March 1 to 8, LA to New York on the Transcon round trip, it's 190 bucks. You know what it is over Easter break? I put April 13th to the 22nd, 230 bucks. Let's go back three years to 2019. The minimum ticket was 440 bucks. So we're still in a buyer's market here and we should take advantage of that. Uh, oh, I have a piece of trivia for you. We always do this every week. So let's do it now. Uh, it's, a, it's a cruise ship trivia piece. The world's largest cruise ship, it's called the Wonder of the Seas, sets sail supposedly next month. How much in tons does it weigh? Think big. For those of you who may not remember this, a ton is 2,000 pounds. But check it out. How much in tons does it weigh? I'll give you the answer a little bit later. Uh, and... Now let's go to some of your notes on the paper here. Uh, hello from Ohio, from Sherry. Karen is saying, hi from the Oryx Hotel in Doha Airport. Wow, I stayed at that airport hotel for three weeks doing a television project. Uh, she says, I was able to jump through all the COVID hoops to get to Kenya, and I'm on my way back there after having it all canceled for the last two years. Anything you'd recommend in the Nairobi area? I would. Uh, in the central market of Nairobi, and you have to ask around, 
they have what's known as the sign makers. And there, there may only be one or two guys around in their stall, but they're called the sign makers. And if there's nobody there, they know where the one guy is. They literally will make you any sign you want, hand chiseled out of wood with white paint in the letters. And it's the coolest gift to give people. And they'll do anything you want. I had one made for me, which still hangs on my door in New York. And it's intentional. Nobody knows what it means. But I'll tell you what it says in Swahili. Mubakali. That's M-B-W-A-K-A-L-I. Know what that stands for? <laughs> you wear the dog. Anyway, that's one recommendation because it's cool. Nobody's going to tell you that. The other thing, if you're a meat eater, and I stopped eating meat in November of 2008, but if you are a meat eater, there's a cool restaurant out near the airport, not the main Nairobi airport, but the domestic airport, and it's called Carnivore. And uh, remember, I haven't had meat since 2008, so I'm not telling you to eat meat. But if you do eat meat and you're looking for a different experience, what do they serve on the menu there? Zebra, antelope, wildebeest, uh, and, and many others. And you know what? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. It tastes just like chicken. Anyway, okay. But you need to do it. It's totally a cool thing to do. Uh, and uh, But the other thing is you want to get outside of Nairobi, relatively quickly and get out into the Mara. And uh, that's where the action is. The other thing you can do if you're really adventurous and uh, I, I, I recommend it for those who are, get on the old, they used to call it the Uganda Railroad, but it's actually the Nairobi to Mombasa Railroad. It goes right from, the, from Nairobi to the beach and uh, doesn't go very fast, but that's part of the, uh, that's part of the attraction. All right. Here's one from Bob who says, I used to fly LAX to Bangkok, sometimes direct. I heard they failed to meet safety standards and have been banned from U.S. airports. Any recommendations on this service? Oh, and the food was great. Okay. Uh, you're incorrect, by the way, Bob. Yes, there, was, there were flights from uh, LAX to Bangkok. They were not nonstop in those days. Uh, they stopped usually in Tokyo. Uh, Thai Airways did it. Uh, and many other airlines did it. Northwest Airlines did it through Tokyo as well. Uh, but if you're referring to Thai Airways, no, Thai Airways never failed safety standards. They failed economic standards. They, they, were, they, they went bankrupt. Now, that doesn't mean they're not operating, but they filed for bankruptcy, and they're trying to restart some of those routes now. There was a time that Thai Airways, or Thai Air, uh, that Thai Airways was a phenomenal airline because, first of all, their standards were very high. And second of all, their in-flight service was trained by Scandinavian Airlines, and uh, that was a great combination. Okay, Jana says, hello from Chicago, just returned from Israel and Jordan, no lines. I had, I had uh, seven COVID tests in two weeks, which reminds me, there's good news here, guys. France, Portugal, Norway, the United Kingdom have all gotten rid of the required testing to get in there if you're vaccinated and boosted. And many of these countries have also gotten rid of the tests that you were required to take once you got there. This is all good news. Now the lobbying efforts turn to the United States and the 24 hour rule that you have to have a negative COVID test 24 hours before you come home. I had, I'm gonna have mine as well. That test is still on the books. It's still a requirement. My guess is they're gonna modify it over the next four weeks and make it uh, that you don't have to have the test if you can prove you've been vaccinated. Uh, so stay tuned. This may change. Okay. Uh, let's keep going here. Uh, Janice says hi. Carrie says hi. Uh, here we go. Sandy Collins. Since Jem is thought to be opening sometime this November, Sandy's referred to the, as the Grand Egyptian Museum. We've talked about this before. We have moved our trip up to leaving February 28th, 2023 to make sure that Jen is open. When is the best time for getting Saver Awards uh, besides the day they open? I think for Flying Blue, when we have the miles that will expire, it's 355 days out. Any thoughts? Yeah. If it's 355 days out, wait till it's 329 days out. Inside the 330-day window, that's when you pounce to redeem your miles. Uh, again, here's your trivia question. The world's largest cruise ship, the Wonder of the Seas, set sail supposedly next month. 
That's a Royal Caribbean ship. How much in tons does it weigh? And Janice, your answer is a lot. Uh, that's uh, essentially correct, but we're not going to say you won. Um, let's go back up here. Terry Reed says, hi, Peter. Hello to my good friend, Terry. Uh, we have Ju saying hi from Japan. Cher saying ciao from Florence, Arizona. Uh, Robin is still in Williamsburg, Virginia. We know that. Uh, Sandy saying hi from Charlotte. Ellen Fisher, any word when the U.S. might drop testing requirements for entry? I just talked about that. I'm thinking before May 15th uh, for those who are vaccinated. Patty Porter, hi, y'all. She said that I didn't from Kentucky. Uh, and greetings from Tanzania. And greetings right back. Uh, hello from icy and snowy Chicago. How bad is it? For those people who know, I, I checked the weather out in Chicago today. I believe it was six degrees. Okay, bathing suit weather. Uh, greetings from New Jersey from Linda. Katrina says hello from Alabama. Uh, Ah, Sandy says, I was absolutely right about the devaluation of miles. I couldn't even get miles from Atlanta to Newark to Joburg in December 2021. The minute you talked about it, we had to pay for business tickets on Delta for $7,000 a piece to go this September. Well, I have a bone to pick with Delta. And by the way, you're talking to somebody who has a few million miles of Delta. Redeeming miles on Delta is... Um, what can I say? It's 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 a tough experience. They don't make it easy. And what makes matters even more problematic is if you do an airline by airline fare comparison or a mileage comparison on routes in which they directly compete. I saw, and I'll give you just one example, LA to New York, round trip on the Transcon. You want to redeem miles on American or United? You could probably do it for 35,000 miles in coach assuming the seats are available. What is it on Delta? By the way, the plane doesn't fly any faster. The food's not any better, although they do still give you the Biscoffs. 65,000. Why? Uh, because Delta is playing a much more tougher game in the redemption world. Uh, you know, they make it tougher to redeem as well as making it tougher to earn. I'm sorry to hear your story, Stan, Sandy. It's, there has to be a better way than spending $7,000 each to go to South Africa. And I'll give you one possible option since you're not going till September, 2022. And since you bought tickets that under the deal where they can't give you a ticket change fee, they can actually basically put your money in a, in a separate credit card situation where you hold on to all your money if you change your flight. Here's my other suggestion, try this out. You wanna to go to either Cape Town or Johannesburg, right? Okay, go to your local newsstand, you know, actual newspapers that carry international newspapers. You can also try this online, but they don't always advertise the stuff online. Get the actual physical paper in your hand, whether it's the Independent, the Telegraph, the Times, the Observer, get it on a Saturday when they run their travel sections and look at the, at the airfare ads from London to Cape Town or London to Joburg and price that ticket, hold on to that, and then price a ticket, a cheap ticket from New York to London. If you're going from New York, for example, you might find that doing it that way will save you about $4,000 simply because they're putting tickets for sale overseas that they're not putting up for sale in the United States. Okay, so I would look at that before I would confirm that you're going to spend $14,000 for two tickets to uh, to Joburg. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, do I have a favorite brand of waterproof, not just water resistant jacket or poncho that you like? We want to avoid getting soaked to the bones with our current unclear in the concept of waterproof. Well, the one I like is the Barber jacket, B-A-R-B-O-U-R.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. We had a very weak signal here in Riyadh, but we're back with you. So thanks for staying with us. If you got some comments and some notes you want to get to me, please send them. And let's go back to those comments right now. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, all right, we have an answer on the cruise ship trivia test because someone looked it up. They just didn't guess. And I can tell you that because Jill Ann Siegel guessed, listen to this, it weighs 236,857 tons. You're right. <laughs> All right. So you had time to do the open book test, obviously. Uh, okay. Let's keep going. Uh, from Stephen, given the antics of China on the world stage of late, would you still sign off on traveling to Beijing, Sh Shanghai, holding my breath for your, for your reply? Well, what would keep you from going? You want to make a political statement and vote for you, and vote with your wallet? That's your right. Uh, but I have to tell you that in my experience, with very, very few exceptions around the world, I would not necessarily uh, do that simply because it would rule out just about 90% of the countries around the world. It's really simple as that. So, by the way, the, the people you see behind me, they're in the business center here at a hotel here in Riyadh where the signal sucks, but we're doing our best. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, Marcia says, uh, Peter, I bet it's colder and icier here in North Idaho. I bet it could be. Uh, Ellen says, do I think the U.S. will continue airplane mask requirements after March 18th? I, hope, I sure hope so. Well, they're not going to wait till March 18th to make that decision. They're going to make that decision probably in the next two weeks, probably around March 1. And if I had to guess, they'll probably extend it till May 15th. Uh, uh, Dora says, hello from Long Beach, California. Okay, try to find a nonstop from L.A. to BDL. You're not going to find the nonstop from L.A. to BDL. does not exist. Uh, uh, Lois guessed 187,000 tons. Nope. You need to talk to Jill Ann Siegel, who, who cheated. Uh, or who probably works for Royal Caribbean. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Karen says, uh, okay. Where are we? Are oh, yeah. Somebody guessed 220,000 tons. I have no concept of tonnage. Sharon Oldham, she was right there with Jill. She looked it up. Uh, okay. Oh, and uh, it was 50 degrees yesterday in Chicago. Now it's in the 20s. My understanding tomorrow is it's going to be six degrees. But thank you for that weather report from Nancy. Uh, okay. Sandy goes, I would rather stick pins in my eyes and try to redeem Delta mileage. <laughs> They can put those biscoffs where the sun don't shine. No, they can give me the biscoffs. It's the least they can do for all the mileage they won't let me redeem. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Uh, okay, here's one. 65,000 miles on a, from Atlanta to Cape Town in August on American Airlines. A better deal than, uh, than Delta. My point exactly. Uh, okay. I, I know we had a freeze frame we lost. I'm seeing all your notes right now, but we're back. Uh, sorry about that. All right. I know I'm, I was in freeze mode. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, okay. And Kerwin says, be careful with buying tickets the way I suggested and ensure you have plenty of time between flights as you more than likely will need to enter the country so you can check in for the, for the next flight. If your inbound flight is delayed and you miss the outbound flight, the second airline won't care. He's right. But let's go back to the to the London example that I gave you. The minimum connect time, even if you had a through ticket, is three hours. And for your bag, it's four. So pick a flight that's leaving four hours after you're scheduled to arrive. Roll the dice. Take your chances. Uh, okay. Here we go. Uh Here's one from Richard. Two years ago, my family purchased a Trafalgar tour through the Lackland Air Force Base Travel Agency. When my brother-in-law showed his passport at the departure gate, they noticed it had some mold on it. <laughs> when was the last time he traveled? They would not allow him to board the plane. He purchased travel insurance, but the travel agency said it did not cover the situation. Yeah, that's that famous mold on the passport exclusion in the policy. Uh, you know what? I've not heard of this happen to anyone else. But what you didn't tell me, Richard, was how much mold was on the passport? Was it even readable? I mean, seriously, let's uh, get me more information on that. Seems a little crazy. 
Okay, here we go. We're looking for up. Oh, hello from Pam from Duluth, Minnesota. I bet you're cold today. Uh, all right, Gary saying trying to keep up with five countries entry requirements on a cruise is a pain. Well, that's where a travel agent comes in. If you bought the ticket or your cruise ticket on with a travel agency and they're they're really responsible, they can do a lot of that work for you. That's what they're there for. And they probably know what the rules are to make sure that you have all the paperwork and the cruise line's going to do it too. And the reason why the cruise line's going to do it is many ports will not let them even come into the harbor unless all the paperwork's in place. So it's in their best interest to help you out too. All right. You don't have to wing this one. Talk to them. Uh, okay. Danielle says, how are the airlines allowed to deny boarding of a person with a new passport less than six months when the country to visit doesn't have that restriction? I wasn't, allowed, I wasn't aware that they did that. Uh, look, if somebody has a new passport, uh, then they have a new passport. That's, that's fine. The, the, the problem is if you have a passport with only less than six months of validity left, a lot of airlines won't let you board. It's not if you have a passport that's only six months old. No, no, it's the other way around. Okay. Uh, all right. Dennis says, flying's going and settling. We were on AA from Dallas to San Jose in an exit row. Across the house, the three people in the adjacent aisle had carry-on completely overflowing in the aisle. We were tempted to flag the attendant, uh, but didn't want anyone getting upset or obnoxious. What would you have done? We take this job seriously, and yet we could not see anything exiting the plane safely on that side. Next time, we'll take photos. Absolutely take photos, but let me tell you about how bad this has become. Nobody wants to pay for check bags. They want to gate check their bags so they don't have to pay for it. Uh, I've seen as many as 63 bags on, air, on airport jetways for people who got them through security. These are big bags. And then the airlines, oh, you can't bring that on the plane. We're going to have to gate check that. But they didn't charge them. The problem is that in the best of situations, in an emergency situation, when you have to evacuate the plane, every airline has to demonstrate that they can effectively evacuate the plane with half the exits blocked and the plane fully loaded in less than 90 seconds, even with no carry-on bags in the aisle. I challenge any airline to actually make that deal happen. It's been my guess, and I'm not saying it as a fact, but my intuition tells me that the people who are doing that test are the cast from Cirque du Soleil. I do not understand how it is physically possible on a Boeing 737, fully loaded, without amount of space between your seats. That's okay, sir. You can look anytime you want uh, to evacuate a plane in less than 90 seconds. I haven't seen it happen ever. And yet every year the airlines pass the test. I don't get it. All right, let's keep going. Uh, all right. Oh, and Jill says, you never said I couldn't Google. Okay, well, that constitutes an open book test, Jill, but thank you again on the wonder of the seas. Uh, okay, uh, it's, 72 now, it's 72 now in Houston, and tonight it will go down to 38 degrees. Wow, that's Houston in the winter for you. Uh, okay, and Joseph says he's hearing me loud and clear from Nairobi. Okay, Terry Hart, hi from Madison, Wisconsin. How about those basketball badgers? Yep, we love it. Uh, going to Italy in June, my COVID booster will by then be nine months old. Will that be a problem? Yes, it will. We're talking about a 207-day cutoff period. The 207-day period is if you were vaccinated outside of that 270-day window, most of these countries will not let you in. Some have made it a 180-day window, and that would be Israel. Uh, so double check. But if you can qualify for a booster shot, please get it. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let's go to the photo of the week. We got to talk about this one. We love this photo. Check it out. We're going to put it up right now. And there it is. No, uh, no retouching there. Anybody know where that is? I'll tell you. First of all, it was taken by Gary Garfield. Congratulations, Gary. It's the painted desert in Arizona. And uh, he, he, he visited in early spring just prior to uh, an advancing storm. That's a beautiful shot of the sky, which we all know what that means. Uh, he said, we found ourselves alone at the site, simply enjoying nature's work and the changing colors. There's beauty everywhere if we just take the time to look and enjoy. Congratulations, Gary. If you've got a photo you want to send in as the photo of the week, please do that. And uh, if we like it, it goes up just like Gary's. 
All right, let's go back to a few more sentences here from you guys. Uh, okay, here we go. It's, oh, it's balmy in New Hampshire at 56 degrees. Uh, all right, here we go. Balmy five degrees in Duluth. By the way, you didn't tell me how, how much it was how much it was in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm guessing it's about five degrees there too. All right, some other emails that you sent to me. Uh, Linda, any idea why the CDC is so hard on the cruise industry with COVID-19 mandates versus any other form of gathering? Well, the CDC has always been hard on cruise lines. Remember norovirus? In fact, they're the only entity in the, in the travel industry that has to report those kinds of stories, those kinds of cases. People tend to think that, you know, these ships are floating Petri dishes. They're not. Uh, and now that we're managing COVID, my prediction is the cruise ship industry will get back on its feet and start sailing again with full loads of people with confidence, with confidence. You know, I get angry. You know, I, I try to pride myself on, on accuracy and context. I get angry when people say, oh, there's been another outbreak of COVID on a cruise ship when you have 48 cases and the ship is carrying 5,300 people. That's not even 1%. If you had a 1% COVID caseload in any community in America, they throw a party. So that's not an outbreak. And they're managing it because the people on the ship have already been vaccinated. These are sort of breakthrough cases with mild symptoms. Nobody gets hospitalized. Nobody dies. They can monitor. They can track. They can trace. And life goes on. So uh, I predict it's going to get better. It is. All right. Here's one from... Uh, Ah, Patty says, I'm flying Delta to Paris, and they've changed the plane from Atlanta to Charles de Gaulle to an Airbus A350. It's $139 to upgrade to Delta Comfort. Is there much difference besides being closer to the front, moving from row 44 to row 32? Yes, there is. You know what the difference is? You're like 12 rows closer to the cookies you still can't get. You can smell them. You can't have them. Uh, look. If it's truly Delta Comfort, they're giving you a little bit more legroom, otherwise known as pitch, and it's you know it's about an eight and a half to nine hour flight for 139 bucks. You be the judge. I'd probably do it. But uh, the problem about premium economy is that they will even price the dreaded middle seat as an upgrade. I'm sorry, that's an insult. Uh, Carol says I'm traveling to Puerto Vallarta in a week, staying in a condo. Is it true that major hotels? will test non-guests for a fee? The answer is a qualified maybe. It depends on the hotel. It depends on the hotel. But you need to call ahead, talk to the concierge, develop a relationship, and find out. Because there are two different kinds of tests that hotels are doing. They're the ones where they will arrange for you to have a service come to the hotel. That's expensive. Or in some countries, not just in Mexico, but in some countries, there are hotel doctors who have offices in the hotel, and it becomes a much more feasible opportunity. But call ahead, have a conversation. This is not some information you want to get online, because things change by the day. Uh, okay. Pat says, what are my thoughts on most of the EU countries dropping the testing on entry requirements, especially Italy? Look, why were there testing requirements to begin with? It was based on the vaccination levels and the case numbers in those countries. It had nothing to do with you because you couldn't get in without proving vaccination anyway. So to me, I'm glad that they relaxed it simply because I've been paying so much money for it. My nose is ready to fall off uh, and I get it, but understand the metrics that they're using here. It's not based on you. It's based on either the number of cases or the level of vaccination in that country. But if you've been vaccinated, if you've been boosted, if you're within that 270 day window, then if they want to relax those requirements, count me in. Okay. Nancy says, any feedback on LOT, the Polish airline? Uh, travel advisor suggested flying them to Prague and Budapest in December. Looks like a good price. I actually like LOT a lot. How about that? I like LOT a lot. Uh, but I do, if you don't mind connecting through Warsaw. And they've developed a relatively good hub and spoke system there. Uh, and, and they also do stuff in Krakow, but mostly in Warsaw. And you'll see it, if you don't mind making that stop, the price goes down. And they're flying in a region of the world, in particular the one that you suggested, uh, which is um, uh, Prague and Budapest, 
that they know very, very well. Uh, Gail says, I have credit for a Southwest Airlines flight uh, I never took and don't plan to fly due to my health conditions. Is it possible to give to someone as a gift? I think you should be able to give it to somebody as a gift. Uh, we'll check on that because one or two airlines are actually letting you transfer that. Uh, most of them don't. But Anthony, my crack assistant, is going to get me that answer, and we'll have it for you next week. Uh, Tom says, whatever happened to WOW Air? Uh, is there another cheaper version of an airline that can fly from D.C. to Iceland on? Yeah, WOW Air went bow wow. It, it's uh, it's gone. It, it left about a year and a half ago. It actually may have even left, if my memory serves me correctly, before the pandemic. There's a new airline starting up in Iceland based on the same model of WOW, and we'll get you more information on that as well. The real problem that you have on that is they're not necessarily flying to all the major gateway cities that WOW did. And that was one of the reasons why why, Mal, why WOW why I went under. Uh, they would try to do too much in too many cities. They literally could not compete and they couldn't they couldn't make it worth. They were flying for much more money than it cost them than it cost you to fly. Uh, uh, Archibald says, when will you release Royal Tour of Tanzania? I can tell you it premieres starting April 21st on PBS, so check your local listings. Uh, we will uh, have more information on that as we get closer. Uh, but the first station to go will be WTTW in Chicago, and then all the other PBS stations falling behind that. It's not going to air just on one air date on one day. It will air for a number of weeks and months throughout the country, and it will also be available instantaneously after the 21st of April on Amazon Prime and Apple TV+. And for those of you who don't know about that, this is our 22nd year doing these shows on PBS where I go to individual sitting heads of state and I get them to give me the impossible seven or eight days of their schedule devoted only to me. I'm not being selfish here, but what that really means is that for that next eight days, that head of state becomes my tour guide to the country. Imagine two people on a road trip, one of whom just happens to run the country. So we've done everything from uh, Jordan to New Zealand to Israel to R Rwanda to to, to uh to Poland, uh, and our most recent one is Tanzania. Okay, uh, bottom line here is we're done for today. You know why? I have a plane to catch, but I will see you on the radio on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. If I couldn't answer your question today, send it in anyway to peter at petergreenberg.com. We'll answer it either online or on the radio. Again, Royal Tour of Tanzania, April 21st. Check your local listings. And we'll see you next week from the civilized state of New York, if I'm not frozen out. Have a great week, everybody. I'll see you next week.